Guys, Yeezy has just released what has been in the works for years now, a $20 sneaker and clothing line. And what this all means for this sneaker and fashion industry could actually be pretty crazy. So we gotta talk about it. So let me lay out a little bit of a timeline for you guys. So all of this kind of kicked off right at the end of December. This is when the infamous Yeezy pod sock launched along with the entire Vultures merch line. We all already knew that the Yeezy socks were coming in some form because Ye had been wearing them in different shapes and sizes for a very long time leading up to this. And when they loaded up to the website, they retailed at $200, which was pretty steep for a pair of socks to say the least. Now, of course, I had to pony up and pay this price for this pair of socks because it's the first Yeezy sneaker since the split from Adidas. So of course, I had to get a pair to review on the channel and just generally speaking, I was super interested in this sneaker. Now, this was a pre-order, so it did say under the listing that it would take four weeks to ship out. So as everybody who paid that price tag was waiting for their orders or their shipping confirmations, something else pretty interesting happened on the other side. Adidas decided to announce that they were going to be releasing the Yeezys that they had stuck in their warehouse. Because as we all know, since the Yeezy and Adidas partnership ended, Adidas was stuck with a ton of Yeezys left to sell. They did two big releases in 2023, I think one in May or June, and then the next one in August. And the third and what everybody thinks is going to be the final release was supposed to happen in November. November, but it never happened. Adidas was even planning on destroying them, however decided not to do that and just drop them all here in 2024. Adidas said that they currently have 300 million euros worth of Yeezy stock that they are going to be dropping. This would include a ton of different sneaker models from like the 350s, they've got some boots that are coming, of course foam runners and slides. We're gonna see a lot this year. So right as Ye goes and launches his very first solo project completely independently with the Yeezy sock shoe and the rest of the clothing line, Adidas is now still getting rid of all of the Yeezy sneakers from that collaboration. However, all of this gets even more interesting. Three days ago, Ye finally released the Vultures album, which uh, a lot of us were even speculating that that might never happen. After multiple delays, it immediately went to number one in 83 different countries. So it's clearly a very, very successful project so far. It's also worth mentioning that along with the sneakers and the clothing line, which were independent projects, this album was also released independently, which is a pretty massive deal for the music industry. So I sit here right now, it's only been three days after the Vultures album dropped and so much has happened. So first off, yesterday, seemingly out of nowhere, everything on the Easy Supply website changed their prices down to $20. And this was announced by Kanye West through posting this video on Instagram. Bit of a Robin Hood in a way where, yeah, people can go and say, okay, Okay, this like multi-billionaire spent four million dollars on Balenciaga in one year, but did I bring the designs back down to earth as much as I could because Gap didn't take it to twenty dollars the way I wanted to because they were still trying to protect the classism of the idea of Balenciaga and the idea of Gap or the idea of a Gap and Yay collaboration and Balenciaga collaboration. My thought is to take it and bring it, I mean, let's take it and get it to free, but at least get it to $20. So all of the clothing, even the Yeezy sock sneakers were all just $20. Now, most people thought this was some kind of mistake or a glitch in the website and it would soon be corrected, but no, turns out literally everything was selling for $20. So this caused a huge influx in sales. One of the most interesting parts is Ye actually posted the numbers for this single day of sales. According to the end of day report, there was 266,000 Yeezy pods that were sold. The one box tee, 79,000. The Vultures pants, 57,000. And the Vultures long sleeve t-shirt, 53,000. Overall, there was almost 300,000 sales. And the total sales in terms of how much money was $19.3 million. And this was all in a single day, which is insane. Now, of course, with everything suddenly changing to $20, you had a ton of people that had literally just bought the socks for $200, including myself. I spent $200 on these socks, so a lot of people were like, yo, what's going on, dude? We, we just spent $200 and now they're $20. Did we just get scammed? Most of the people that paid $200, like their orders hadn't even been shipped yet, mine included. So this definitely caused a stir online for a while in different comments sections, I was getting a flood of DMs. And then to make this even crazier, Ye announced that they're going to be refunding people $180 for anybody who paid $200 for the Yeezy pod sock, they're getting their money back. So here we have it, the first real $20 Yeezy sneaker 
were finally brought to life. And to top it all off, it was done completely independently. No Adidas, no Gap, no Nike. This was all brought to retail completely solo. And this is something that Ye's been talking about over and over again for quite a while now, that he wanted his sneakers and clothing to just be $20. They'll be selling for $20 each. Be $20 at least get it to $20. Everything we do is gonna cost $20. We need to make sure that everyone can receive the same level of cuts, the same level of food, same level of water, same level of education, the curriculum, the engineering. We're beings with engineering opportunities. We're getting past the past, we're focused, on the future. He's actually said that he really doesn't like hype culture. He also said that he never liked the idea of people buying his clothing or sneakers because of the exclusivity factor. You know, kind of like, I got these Yeezys and you don't. I mean, for a long time, he was trying to get the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner down to $20. And the lowest he managed to get those with Adidas was $75 or $80. He was trying to get a lot of the products that he made with Gap down to $20 as well. And right at the end of both the Adidas and Gap partnerships, that was something he he was saying was a big reason why he was so upset with both of these partnerships because they did not want to bring the price down. But one thing I was thinking, and I'm sure a lot of other people is just like, how is this possible? How are they not losing money selling a $20 t-shirt or a $20 sneaker? Well, obviously it's very hard to know without actually knowing how much this stuff actually costs to produce. The one thing we do know that they kept pretty low was marketing. I mean, this was Ye's Super Bowl ad. Hey y'all, this is Ye, and this is my commercial, and since we spent all the money on the commercial spot, we actually didn't spend any money on the actual commercial, but the idea is I want you to go to easy.com, y-e-e-z-y.com, and I'm going to write it at the bottom of the screen, and I got some shoes, and mm, that's it. Which actually, when you think about it, is kind of genius because this ad clearly wasn't made to strictly convert into actual sales on the Yeezy Supply website. I mean, it's so crazy him just literally recording on the front face camera of his phone while he's in his car just talking. That as an advert clearly was made for like sharing on social media. Like the buzz and the headlines that that ad made online is way more marketing than the number of conversions that just the ad made. And when you look at the products, and I know you could look at the socks and be like, well, I mean, they're just socks. How expensive could they actually be to produce? Well, even though it does seem like it is just two pieces, you've got the, you know, the sock upper and then the outsole that's stuck to the bottom. Well, that outsole would actually need to have a mold created, which is actually a very expensive process. You would need employees to put them together. And then obviously just all of the material costs. And the one thing I will say is that everything on Yeezy's website from the Yeezy socks to all of the clothing, it was only ever offered in three sizes, which is mainly the most unprecedented for shoes. So having only three different options could definitely have kept costs down. But honestly, I think there's very little to no profit being made on at least the Yeezy socks, but the clothing on the other hand is a little bit more interesting. I bought two t-shirts and when I got them in, I was pretty fascinated by the design of them because they also really indicate like cost saving measures were taken with the creation. Like these t-shirts are literally made from one piece of material material with literally just two stitches going down the side. For comparison, like a regular t-shirt needs a whole different neck area. It needs different pieces of material for like the sleeves. Uh, you've got sewing all over it. You've got stitched hems as well. So there's a ton of stitching. But these Yeezy t-shirts are like as basic as possible. Like the neck hole for these t-shirts is literally just a cut line. There's, there's not like any other hem or anything like that. You just slice and you put your head in. All I'm saying is yes, all of these products were loaded up for a significantly different price tag, the socks being $200, a lot of the t-shirts and everything being $80 to $100, but it all kind of seems like potentially cost-saving measures were taken with these things. So was the original plan to sell them for $20 all along? I mean, the fact that you can literally buy Yeezy sneakers and Yeezy clothing for $20 is absolutely insane. I never thought I would ever see the day, especially when it seems like currently 
everybody in the world is going the other way. A great example of this would be Pharrell and Louis Vuitton's brand new $75,000 Timberland sneaker. Or one crazier, the million dollar speedy bag, which literally costs a million dollars. It's the absolute polar opposite to what Ye's doing, trying to make everything accessible to anyone. Rather than pricing people out or making stuff that's only for the extremely wealthy, these new Yeezy products don't rely on artificial scarcity or not being able to get it because you don't have enough money. But what does this mean for the future of Yeezy and sneakers in general? Well, something very interesting happened. Ye actually posted a picture where he met with the CEO of Adidas. This happened yesterday and bizarrely, he was wearing black Air Force Ones. <laughs> Tonight. Which is hilarious. And also kind of a power move. And the caption was that he just bumped into the CEO of Adidas. However, he actually changed this caption three times. The original one said that he offered Adidas 20% of the shoe sales for distribution. He then changed it to I bumped into the CEO of Adidas and then make Adidas great again. So this could be the beginning of a brand new Yeezy and Adidas partnership. Or it, they literally could have just bumped into each other. Man, if they were able to work something thing out, ultimately, I think this would benefit consumers massively. The distribution and manufacturing part is a massive hurdle for anybody starting up. And it's usually what makes the end product so much more expensive for the consumer. So who knows? This could be Yeezy designs with Ye having full creative control and combine that with Adidas's massive scale of distribution and manufacturing. It'd be pretty wild. So here's the thing. This is what I think is the main takeaway for me personally from all of this. The sneaker industry at the moment feels like every Every brand is solely relying on hype as being the biggest factor for product selling. You know, if you're a brand not doing some kind of limited collaboration, you're not really in the conversation. I mean, currently triple collaborations are quite a regular thing. So what would the sneaker industry look like if full scarcity and price was no longer a factor? Currently, if you wanted to buy a hyped up sneaker model or a pair of Yeezys, you would have to try on the retail release, enter some kind of raffle, most likely take the L, and if you really, really wanted that pair of shoes, you'd have to look towards the aftermarket. Which sometimes could have that pair of shoes that you just took an L on for double the retail price. Right now, anybody can buy a pair of Yeezy sneakers for $20. And there's no false scarcity. There's absolutely no limit. You can buy as many pairs as you want. So imagine if this was the case for all Yeezys moving forward. I know currently we're talking about socks, but once this changes and we get different types of Yeezy sneakers, would this change the game? Game, or would people just no longer want them because the hype is not there? Number one comment I get if I talk about any kind of GR Jordan at the moment is, oh, if there was a reverse swoosh on that shoe or if it had the text air on the midsole, it would have sold out. So honestly, shifting away from the hype factor would be an incredibly tough task. And I think it would take uh, a severe mental shift for a lot of consumers. But ultimately, I feel like if the product was good enough, it has a real shot from shifting consumers mindsets from hype over to this product is just so good I need to have it. So who knows we'll have to see this could be the beginning of something very big. I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot more independent projects from Yeezy and it's going to be pretty interesting seeing what happens next. There's the whole timeline guys I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was so incredibly interesting and uh, how much this potentially could change and what we could start seeing in the next couple months but I would love to hear your guys's thoughts on all of this down in the comment section. And hey, if you want to know a little bit more about Adidas's plans to release these Yeezy products, well, just click on that video over there.